Hi, and welcome back to First Year Undergraduate Microeconomics. So far, when we've been looking at the surplus created by transactions, we've looked at the benefits to buyers, or what we've called consumer surplus, the benefits to the sellers, or what we've called producer surplus, and any government revenue or expenditure. But in our tables, we've had one other category. That other category is costs or benefits from market transactions that affect people outside the market. That's what we're now going to turn our attention to. In this presentation, we will introduce the idea of externalities. In particular, we're going to talk about what an externality actually is. So, here is our definition. An externality exists if one person's actions affect another person's welfare, but there is no compensation. In other words, the effect on another person's welfare occurs outside the market transaction. To show this another way, when a seller sells something to a buyer, whether it's a good or service, the buyer compensates the seller. In other words, there's a flow of dollars back from the buyer to the seller. An externality exists if there's not just this flow of dollars and flow of goods between the buyer and the seller, but there's also other people outside the market who are affected in some way by this transaction. They may be better off or they may be worse off, but there's no compensation. They're not the buyer, they're not the seller, they're simply other people affected by the transaction that occurs in the marketplace. If the other people outside the marketplace are made worse off, then we refer to that as a negative externality. Let's think of some examples. An obvious example is pollution. When you turn on a light, a television set, your computer, you are buying electricity. An electricity company with electricity generators sells you that electricity and at the end of the month you get a bill from that company and you pay for your electricity. But the act of producing and selling that electricity to you has another nasty effect. If, for example, the electricity is produced using coal, then you get pollution, as shown in the diagram here. And that pollution doesn't just affect the people involved in the marketplace, it affects everyone. The pollution makes outsiders worse off. But those outsiders don't receive any compensation for being forced to suffer the pollution. The outsiders can't send you a bill and say, hey, you turned your TV on, you turned that light switch on, we had to breathe in muck because of you consuming electricity, well, they could try and send you a bill, but I bet you wouldn't pay it. Similarly, the outsiders can't send a bill to the parties who generate the electricity. The electricity generators would just say, get lost. We didn't do anything illegal. They would ignore the bill. So we have a situation where outsiders are made worse off by people buying and selling electricity, but there is no compensation to those outsiders. That's a negative externality. It's easy to think up other examples, such as noise pollution from aeroplanes. If you live in a flight path, then you'll know noise from planes can be pretty annoying, but you don't get compensated for that noise. There's no compensation, it's a negative externality. The same holds for passive smoking. I'm not a smoker, but when somebody buys some cigarettes, lights up and breathes out the smoke, I have to put up with the smell. And, well, I've tried, but they refuse to compensate me. So when people sell cigarettes to consumers and those consumers smoke the cigarettes, that creates a negative externality. Of course, sometimes the other party is made better off by the transaction. In that situation, we have a positive externality. 
if you buy and use a deodorant, then people don't have to put up with your bad, sweaty smell. You create a positive benefit to outsiders. But I bet you don't send them a bill and say, hey, you didn't have to put up with my sweat. Pay me. Or if you do, I don't think they'll pay you. So using a deodorant creates a positive externality. People get benefits from public parks, green areas, flower gardens that they don't have to pay for. So again, there's a positive externality. And one close to every academic's heart is basic research and development. If someone thinks up a new idea, a new way of doing things, then that idea can be freely available to everyone. They don't pay for it. They get the benefits of the creation of a new idea. It's a positive externality. Hang on a second. Isn't there such a thing as intellectual property? If I just use someone else's idea and they have a patent on it, then they can make me pay for it. Hmm. I think that's going a bit past this introduction. But positive externalities, that creates an incentive for people to create property rights and try and bring the external benefit back in the market. Two final definitions before we finish this introduction. If the externality is created when a person consumes a good or service, then this is referred to as an externality in consumption. In contrast, if the externality is created when a person produces a good or service, it's called an externality in production. Well, that's a definition that the textbooks use. Quite frankly, in most situations, it doesn't matter if the externality is in consumption or in production. So we're not going to pay a lot of attention to it in this course. Finally, two conclusions. The first is that when we do our welfare analysis, we're going to need to take into account any external costs or any external benefits. They're going to be welfare costs or welfare benefits that come from market transactions. So we're going to need to consider them. The second point is that our perfectly competitive market will not maximise social surplus when we have an externality. That's going to be a big difference from what we've done so far, but we'll come to that next time. Thanks for listening.